Jay Delano Ennis was also among a group of high church Pentecostal clerics who in the 1990s became known for adorning their necks with Roman collars, wearing priestly garments with links to their African heritage, reciting the Nicene Creed. Now, if you listen to the videos, those Nicene creeds came from who? Didn't come from the apostles, it came from the Catholics. We didn't need any councils of Nicaea to establish the doctrine. The doctrine was less perfect as it was. Jesus Christ, the prophets and the apostles, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone, what the apostle Paul and what Peter and all of those apostles left was fine as it is. We didn't need any councils 300 years after the death of Christ to confirm what Christianity was. But let's read on. They were a part of a trend that reshaped a portion of American black religion. Traditionally, the Pentecostal church maintained its ardor, but was never really known for its order. That's what he said. The bishop, then the president of the United Pentecostal Churches of Christ, told Religion News Service in 1995, what we're discovering is that order is not blasphemous. Order best represents God. See, it all sounds fine, doesn't it? At that time, Ellis's denomination had joined with two other groups, Pilgrim Assemblies International and Full Gospel Baptist Fellowship for the first joint college of African-American Pentecostal bishops. One of those founding bishops was Bishop Paul Morton. Whatever you're doing in the season, don't do it without me. Yeah, the guy who wrote that. He was a founder of this joint system. I don't know how a Baptist and an apostolic come together when Baptists don't even really believe in the infilling of the Holy Spirit. They supported women ministers, which was a departure from some traditions. At their conferences closing ceremony, Ellis and other bishops wore fuchsia zacchettos or skull caps and Episcopal rings. The religious wear reminiscent of Roman Catholic bishops. Satan always has a man, folks. Ellis's economical work included several visits to the Vatican during St. John Paul II's papacy, including one in 2000, where he led 160 delegates on a pilgrimage in hopes of building closer ties with the Catholic Church. Excuse me? Building closer ties with the whore of Babylon. He retired in 2014 from the role of National Chief of Chaplains for the Civil Air Patrol, according to a bio on his ministry's website. Ellis was recalled as a key leader of the members of the Church of God in Christ. That's Kojic, a denomination he served for more than 35 years and other faith leaders. Bishop Ellis was the consummate church man. He was a wise counselor, dedicated servant and a wealth of information that was helpful to generations and preachers and pastors and bishops, said Bishop Talbot Swan II, leader of Kojic's Nova Scotia jurisdiction. He was a mentor, a friend, a church father. He will be sorely missed. African Methodist Episcopal Bishop Vashti McKenzie, a Texas-based leader, responded to Sabrina Ellis's announcement of her husband's death. Time will not dull his legacy, McKenzie commented on Facebook. You and his sons and daughters in the faith will flesh out the rest. And how true that is. Because you know what? This man has given birth and has been associated with many people you might know. But before we get there, let's hear him. Well, praise the Lord there. I'm Bishop J. Delano Ellis II, and I am the Metropolitan Archbishop for the Joint College of African American Pentecostal Bishops. Proper protocol or dress for bishops and clergy alike is always black in public transportation, travel, on the bus, driving from one city to another, flying from one place to another. Never purple, never scarlet. If we are invited to visit with our brothers uh, in the Roman church, it is black. We should wear black regardless to our rank within our denomination. We wear black. When we are visiting another jurisdiction within our faith group, it is improper to wear anything but black 
unless you're invited to wear purple with the, the host bishop. You never outdress or equally dress your host, your gracious host. Our brothers in the Roman church, how can two walk together if they don't agree? Well, this is him in, who can tell me what he's wearing and what this signifies? Ain't that Freemason? That is a Freemason's uniform badge and belt and whatever else he's wearing. This man was a practicing Freemason. This is not something that I had to dig deep to find. Now, if that hasn't already just shut down this whole Bible study for you, let's continue. Look who preached at his funeral. The apostle of apostasy. The bishop of blasphemy. And if I, if, if, if I had a wild tongue, I would call him the whore's husband. Yes, of course Jakes is involved. Eddie Long. That uh, pastor who was um, found uh, to be having affairs with the young boys in his church and died not long after. You can see him here with his Roman garb. No doubt an affiliate and an associate of the, of the corrupt black American Pentecostal church coming out of the legacy of these corrupt men. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But this, I don't know if they've changed this sign. They may have. So I, I ain't going to put them under the bus. And like I said, I ain't sending everybody to hell. I'm not saying that. I'm showing you what's in front of your eyes. Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, one of the largest apostolic organizations. Look at white Jesus. That's the original sixth sign. You can still sign that, find that sign some, some places today on their insignia. Why would you have that? Why would you, you're not even supposed to, okay, the cross is whatever. Like I said, you don't know, you might not know that. But why would you have an image of Christ? And you in your own Bibles can read that and know that. And then you see all of the bishops in their garb. I'll leave that one alone. This is Bible Way International website. Executive board members. This is telling them what they should wear. This is, these are apostolic organizations. So for all you apostolics, you think you really got it? Red Roman style cassock lining zipper with 33 red cloth buttons, simulated buttons. Let's go down. Roman purple fuchsia, Roman style cassock, Roman purple cloth buttons, stimulated buttons or Roman purple, right? Roman purple uh, cincture with Roman purple sick. These people ain't even shame. Roman purple chimere with Roman purple trim. Roman pu Oh, I'm sick. I'm sick. Apostolics. With the wine of the whore. Marvin Sapp. Look at them kissing the ring. All the Remember the woman said that his sons will do the rest. He joined a fraternity a few years ago. Imagine... Didn't join a fraternity when he was young, but joined a fraternity a few years ago. And if you know, to join any fraternity or secret society, you have to pledge to false gods. This is Marvin Sapp joining into this, 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 this Catholic, black Catholic apostolic system. Now this video, huh, I'm, I'm, I'm a comment on some of it just to give you some understanding. So in the first part of this video, you're going to see uh, this is like a, a meeting of this J. Delano Ellis, and I think it's the, the College of Bishops. Then you're going to see a, a funeral conducted in under that the, the, um, the auspices of one of his organizations. Then you're going to see a bishop called T. Wayne Jackson, who owns um, Impact Network. That video is going to be fast forwarded. It's an eight minute video, but it's going to be very quick and it's an ordination ceremony. So anyway, let's see. Bunch of Catholics, skull caps, big chain, all the Roman guard. Wait till you see the Dagon hats. Remember, I showed you the picture last week of Dagon with the fish on his head. 
this is your Pentecostal people. He said there are a few things that we do before we seal him away forever. We retire things that were necessary for his assignment here on earth. His Episcopal reign, his apostolic reign, the hmm. ring of his authority as the bishop in the Lord's church, which symbolizes his collegiality to his brother bishops. Apostolic this ring. ring. made of hmm. solid gold and of rubies. Normally a bishop would wear an amethyst, but because he was a presiding bishop and his colors changed to that of the ring. Where is that from? Which, where did you see that in the Bible? Lively stone insignia on it. So when everyone would see it, they would see that he is our father in God. Let me just stop there. When everyone see it, they would see that he is our father in God. But Jesus Christ made himself of no reputation. Okay. You took this away. pictorial cross made of gold the cross the symbol of his salvation he preached Jesus and him crucified you know that day and time like now people preach a lot of things but he continued to preach Jesus he continued to preach that what other people don't want to hear that the baptism in Jesus name is still right the blood of Jesus still saves us. The Holy Ghost is still necessary. He preached the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When the bishop wears the cross, it's not a piece of jewelry. It's a symbol of his imprisonment. For he is a prisoner bound in chains to preach this gospel. I have a question. Where did you get that from? When the bishop wears a cross, it's not jewelry. It's a symbol of him being bound in chains. Yes, because Paul wore a, a, a cross for that very same reason. Rubbish. Absolute garbage. You got that from your Catholic fathers. You got that from your mother, the whore. Harlotry. This is why I don't call myself apostolic. I don't associate myself with that name. I'm holiness. I am of the apostles faith. I am not apostolic. Because the word apostolic comes from the Holy Roman Catholic Apostolic Church. Do your research, you proud apostolics. Sick of it. Why call yourself something that's not in the Bible? Just call yourself holy. I want to be holy. Jesus is holy. Without holiness, no one will see God. He never said without apostolic, no one will see God. These are your brothers and sisters if you're claiming apostolic in this day and age. I ain't claiming it. I understand what you mean when you say apostolic. I ain't saying that anybody who says they're apostolic is going to hell. Don't get me wrong. But when you know better, you do better. This is what this is. This the apostolic church? Sorry, let me fast forward. The picture of gold, the cross, the sin. He preached Jesus and him crucified. He would preach a lot of things, but he can can hear that the baptism in Jesus name still saves Sorry, trying to find where I was he preached the death where's the cross symbol of his bound in chains right so this is an ordination service by Bishop T Wayne or Wayne T Jackson watch carefully so he's covered these men with this white thing wait for it wait for it Cover them in red now. Oh, what is he doing? He's lying on top of their bottoms. You can you can express yourself if you've got something to say about this. <laughs> like, like, what what is this? This is ordination service. That looked like a. He's walking around him now a few times. That looks like a satanic witch rule to me if I've ever, ever I've seen one. Um, I don't know about you. Not seen any Bible for this. 
Um, looks like witchcraft to me. Yeah. Anybody got anything to say about that? I'm sorry, Brother Michael, is that some sort of initiation? Like but... That was an ordination, my dear. Don't be disrespectful. <laughs> Okay, I see two hands raised. Let me just finish up and then we'll have a conversation because we're, we're nearly we're near the end. So that was Apostle T. Wayne Jackson, right? He's the owner of Impact Network. So let's see who preaches on this network. The new presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ, Bishop J. Drew Sheard, uh, father of, um, of, of Kira Sheard, husband of Karen Clark Sheard, preaches on this network. T.D. Jake, of, of course Jake's does. Creflo Dollar, Juanita Bynum, Bishop I.V. Hillard. I'm sure some of you have seen these people. We have Rod Parsley, Paul Morton. Of course, Paul Morton was a founder with Jay Delano Ellis of the Joint African-American College of Bishops, which promotes all of this Catholic rubbish. Paula White, I mean, that's not surprising. Paul Lanny, I don't know these other guys. Joseph Prince, I mean, all of these mainstream TV guys, it, it shouldn't really be a surprise. But look at this. Father Cedric Pesegna. So you have a Catholic preaching on your network? The whore right there. The whore's ministers are right in your ministry. And you're doing what the whore does because you've already practiced that. So imagine now, I'm a man of God. And that what that man did to those men, that made the news. That was big news. So it's not like people, oh, you know, they go on his network and they don't know what this man does. Listen. All these people are connected to the whore and they know it. And I'm going to end on this scripture. Then we're going to have a discussion because you're saying, oh, but these people, they might, no, 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 no. Listen to what the Bible says, why none of these people should be associating with none of these people. This is why I say, you be careful who you stand next to. You be careful who you validate because you're going to get judged the same judgment as them and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepest, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. We are not to fellowship with these people when we see what they do. We are to reprove them. We are to rebuke them and show them their unfruitful works of darkness. We don't need to go on their TV networks. So now you see the corruption is very, very deep.